before Pastor Brian comes to take our, our not to take, but to, to come up and help you in your giving this morning, to worship the Lord in our gifts, wanted to bring some news to the congregation, and I want us to, to pray over Sister Judy McCandless. Judy is a wonderful, wonderful child of God, saint of God from our church, been here all of her life. Um, her parents, her grandparents actually were instrumental in starting our congregation 99 years ago. And Sister Judy is now at critical and at the point of death. And so I want us to, to remember her and her family, Molly and Chuck, her son and daughter. I want us to pray for them. And I want us to just remember her today. I promised Molly a few moments ago before service that we would pray for their family during this service. Would you help me to do that right now? Father, as we come before you, we thank you for this precious lady. Lord, who was so faithful to come in on Fridays and help us fold bulletins and just here every week. And Lord, we love her and we honor her. We ask you to touch and minister to her need and to touch her by your Holy Spirit. Let the power and the presence of the angels of God and the power of Jesus to be right there by her side. We ask for strength for this family, that your perfect will will be accomplished and done. Lord, that we give you the honor and the glory for it all, and we thank you today, for we know we have the things we ask, and we ask according to your will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Where is little Miranda? Miranda Kales, is she here? She's just a few days old. Let's look at her. Can I come get her? Oh, my goodness, she's too little. She was just born the other day. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I don't think I've ever held one this tiny. And she's smiling at me. Are you married? <laughs> Look how cute little Miranda Kales is this morning. Isn't she beautiful? Welcome to your church, young lady. You better straighten up now. When we talk about the end times, and they think, you know, wow, I mean, is everything going down? I mean, all the movies that, were, that have come out in the last several years, the end of the world, you know, the last day, the day after tomorrow, and all these things which point to this big doomsday. That's supposed to take place. I got news for you this morning. The last days we refer to is not about doom and gloom. It's about a beginning of something that we have been looking forward to for generations of generations. Looking forward to the will of God and the power of God and the fulfillment of Scripture. When the Bible's talking about the last days, it's not talking about the end of everything. It's talking about the fulfillment of prophetic Scripture in this Word. It's talking about getting to the last chapter in Revelation. It's talking about getting down to the, the nitty-gritty of the, where the rubber meets the road and actually seeing and experiencing for ourselves all of the many things that God has promised. The last days are simply a culmination of the fulfillment of prophecy. And we understand and know that when we say the last days, a lot of folks seem to almost always just automatically connect it to the rapture of the church, the coming of Jesus. And while the coming of the Lord, the rapture of the church, the second coming of Christ to the earth, this all is part of the last days. It's part of prophecy that will be fulfilled. It is not inclusive. It's not all of it. The, the last days began... Really, whenever Jesus came to the earth, Bethlehem was part of ushering in the last days. We understand and we know that, that when the outpouring at Pentecost took place, you know, Peter stood up and said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, who said in the last days, they were in the last days. So we don't get disheartened when we think about the last days, almost as if, well, we think it must be now, and it wasn't then, or it wasn't 50 years ago, Clayton Street talked about the last days, but it must not have been the last days. I got, I got to tell you, it was the last days then. It is the last days now, and it'll be the last days clear up until the time that old Slewfoot is kicked into the lake of fire. Once we understand this and we get it in perspective, then we understand that the coming of Jesus 
is part of, it's, it's, a, it's part of the fulfillment of the prophecy of the last days. But we've been in the last days. Never fear, we're in them. I believe now we're closer than we've ever been. But the thing is, what's awesome about the Word of God, while it says no man will know when He's going to come, so you can't say this is the last day or the end of the world. You can't say it's doomsday. What you've got to be able to say is in looking at Scripture, you would say, hmm, by the signs around me, summer is near. And that's what the scripture said. Matthew chapter 24, after the signs and wonders of the last days was given, he read, he, that we read in, in Matthew 24, verse 32, it says, Now learn this parable Jesus was talking from the fig tree when its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, what things? All of the things previously written in that chapter. They talk about nation rising against nation, wars and rumors of wars, pestilence and all kinds of signs, things that we see. The Bible even talks about when you see these things begin to come to pass, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. We understand and know, it says, so also when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. So I'm here to tell you this morning, yes, we're in the last days. But I can tell you by the signs in the fig tree that the nearness of the coming of the Lord is even at the door. We are a church that believes. We believe in the power of the Word of God. We believe in the basics of the Word. We don't really like to venture too far away from this thing. This is our foundation. This is our cornerstone. The Word of God is good for Profit, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. This word of God is good for our life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. This is good for us. It's a road manual, a life manual. It's a babysitting manual. It's everything you'll ever need. But in it contains the promises of God. And what we've been talking about the last several weeks, as we you talked about churchwide Bible reading, and I talked about the power of words, the power that comes through our agreement. You know, we've got to start praying in agreement with God's Word. We've got to pray and let the power of the Lord speak to us through His Word and live out that promise. The promises of God are sure and amen, and they're full. They're all over the place in this Word, giving us direction on how to pray. And when we pray, it's right to pray in agreement with the Word of God. That's how you're for sure going to get every prayer you ever pray. You won't always get everything you want. Somebody say amen. You won't always get everything you want, everything you desire, but you will get those things that are according to His will and purpose in your life and where they agree with His Word. These are things that are important to know. Fasting brings miracles. It also wakes up the enemy. The enemy knows who you are when you start hungering and thirsting after God, and he begins to wage his devices and schemes against you and he'll attack you but that's where you hold strong and hold true because you know it, you know that if you get the devil's attention then you must be doing something awful right and you must be stay you must stay true to the tenets and foundation of what you're standing on but we also understand and know that we're called through the promises of this word we love to look at verse 28 when it talks about in the last days i'll pour out my spirit and boy we'll shout we'll have a great time we'll dance and we'll praise and we'll worship and we'll write songs about it and we have a great time but you know we often neglect and don't look at what it says in the verses that i read to you before that it talks about some things in the last days that come along with the outpouring of the holy spirit some things that you and I need to kind of wake up and shake ourselves and begin to live out in faith. How many of you know faith pleases God? Faith pleases God. We have to understand that faith is what moves mountains. Faith and belief in God is what brings healing. Jesus over and over again, thy da daughter, thy faith hath made you whole. I've not seen such faith, no, in all of Israel, he said in another scripture. He talks about faith, faith, believing and knowing that God is God and that his word is true and that we can live out that faith. The just shall live by his faith. And when we realize this and know this, that we start to wake up to what does the word say that we can hang on to as a promise? 
What can I hang on to for my family? What can I hang on to for my daughter or for my son? What is it that I can begin to pray in agreement with, with the Lord? What can I do to, to make a difference everywhere I go for the kingdom? Because we see that God, through His wonderful gift of the Holy Spirit, is wanting to effect change. All throughout history, He's been trying to get us to unleash and understand the power that comes with the Spirit. There's always been this war in the Spirit as well. This war of good versus evil. The enemy does not want you and I to have power. He doesn't want us to realize that power. He wants us to get steeped in religion. He wants us to get cold and stagnant and get ceremonial and ritual. He wants us to get so where we get lazy and we don't want to do anything and we just want to come fulfill an obligation or a duty. There are churches packed this morning with people that don't like it, aren't there enjoying it. They're bored out of their mind and they don't want really anything to do with what's going on except they've done their duty for the day and they're out as soon as they possibly can and that's their church experience. That's their Jesus experience. But if you're visiting here today, you've stumbled into a place where a bunch of folks, they got a whole lot more desire than that. We got desire in this house to see the power of God at work. I told some MIP students yesterday, I believe in the power of Pentecost. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not ashamed of it. I'm not ashamed when he moves like he moved this morning. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud of that. I'd much rather see a church alive with vibrant energy and the power of the Holy Spirit than something dead and cute and people looking like, you know, they're putting on some kind of show for you. I'm not interested in that. I can go to a show at King's Island. I don't have to go to church for that. Is that all right? I get off sometimes. You've got to keep me on track. Now, if you say amen a lot, I get back on track. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> heaven, heaven is in transition. I believe there's a rustling in the heavens. I believe the angels are getting their marching orders. You know, as a kid back in children's church when I was young, we used to have what we called rapture practice. Anybody ever have rapture practice? Raise your hand if you did. You know what rapture practice is. The rest of y'all get like a wonderful lesson this morning. When we were little, they, the teacher would say, okay, guys, you ready? Rapture practice. And we would all just go, woo. <laughs> I'm going to do that one Sunday, and you're going to like it. <laughs> Rapture practice, we do that. I kind of get a sense and a feeling, you know, well, that's cute, and kids like that. But, you know, that kind of faith stirred up in people's hearts. You know, I, I kind of... I want to get to the place I've prayed before many years ago. I'd say, Lord, whenever I hear a trumpet anywhere, whether it's somewhere in town or in the street or, or if it's somebody's ringtone, let it stir up a jump in my spirit. Let me get excited about that because I want to have faith that says just any minute now. He is going to come for us. I don't know when. I don't know how long it's going to be. We're in the last days. But I can tell you this. It's closer now, as I've always said, I can be quoted for this, than it's ever been. And it, 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 it what didn't happen back in 1955 at Clayton Street. But they were still looking for the same thing I'm looking for now. And in just any moment, any hour, he is going to step out on a cloud of glory. And he's going to call his church home. The rapture of the church. You may need this this morning. You've had so much trouble. You've had so much going against you and trials and troubles and situations in your life. Look up for your redemption. Draw it nigh. I'm telling you, Jesus Christ is coming soon. Hang on, child of God. Do not get discouraged. Don't get weak. Don't get lazy. Don't get cold. Not at this point. Don't start getting grumpy and don't start allowing things to take you off track. I'm telling you, stay focused on the soon return of Jesus Christ. For in an hour that you think not the Son of Man coming, He's coming. We've got to stay true to these things that literally stir us, stir us in our faith, stir us in our confidence and our boldness to stay true to God's Word, and we live this out, and it causes there to be power in the church. Boy, I wish you'd have seen this morning. Sister Lily Walters at the 8.30 service. Now, if you don't ever visit the 8.30 service, you're the one losing out. We had a wonderful service this morning. Kathy, didn't we? Power of the Lord hit. I'm telling you, a mother and a daughter, Connie, and her mom, Lily, they, they came down and prayed. We were praying for her because you might remember three weeks ago, the doctors came in, visited her in the hospital room, and told her she had cancer. 
They weren't going to do anything for her. She was being dismissed from that hospital to be transferred to another one. They said, you've got to go somewhere where somebody can help you. You've got the big C. But they literally, I walked into the room, and when I walked into her room, I'm just telling you the way it is. This is good for you. It'll build your faith. I walked in that room, and I felt the power and the presence of the Lord. I looked at Sister Lily, Sister Lily and I said, Sister Lily, I feel the presence of the Lord here. I said, when I feel the presence of the Lord, I get bold like a lion. I said, I don't know what God is doing, but I know he's doing something because he's here in this room. And I want you to know God always backs up. If he shows up, he backs it up. And I'm telling you, the doctor came back to her, and the very doctor that told her she had cancer came back and said, well, you must be a praying woman because your prayers work. We can't find nothing on all the new scans. I'm telling you, God turned that around. God turned it around. She came down here for prayer, and she said, she said, Pastor Ray, I'm healed of cancer. I'm not worried about that. She says, but I'm just a little weak, and I know I won't be strong. I, we prayed and laid hands on her, and the power of the Lord hit her. She was down in the floor. Her daughter tried to get her up, and they shouted all the way back to their seat. It was unbelievable the power and the presence of God. I want to go to a church where there's power in the presence of God. I want to go somewhere where it's not just some kind of show, where it's not just something somebody's put together. It isn't all determined on whether or not he hits a perfect key of C or not. I want it to be the real, awesome, authentic power of the Holy Ghost in power and strength right here in this house. I want him to touch us and I want to see the miracles and the signs and the wonders. I look at the things that are written in this scripture when Joel was talking about Pentecost. He was literally talking about the last days. You know, when God poured out the revisioning of Joel, and let that sit in just a little bit, let it settle in there so that you'll understand what I'm getting ready to say. You see, the Holy Ghost, if you understand our history at all, or you're in the church of God this morning, we're not the only church. We don't believe in that. We, we believe people are saved when they know Jesus Christ. They don't have to be a member of any particular denomination or doctrine. We don't believe that we're the only church. We believe we're a good one. But we don't believe we're the only church. But we do believe that the power of the Lord is present here. People can get saved here. They can come to knowledge of Jesus Christ as a relation, in a relationship and know Him as their Savior. But we also, we know that the power of the Lord that hit when, when this church, our denomination, was, was first touched, it was a bunch of Methodists and Baptist folks that got together, and they were having prayer meetings and studies at the home of W.F. Bryant. And they literally, in 1886, were meeting over here in North Carolina at Camp Creek, Barney House. Barney Creek is where they went to. Meeting in the house at first, they ended up getting so large, they had to go to the Shear Schoolhouse, and they started meeting there. And then the, the power of the Lord hit. And I want you to know, that little group of people, they got to about nine people in their little Bible studies, and when all of a sudden, the little lady over in the corner began to speak in tongues. And they didn't know what was going on, because that, that wasn't allowed. You didn't do that. And so she started, but she couldn't stop herself. The power of the Lord hit her in such a mighty way. All eight people stood there with their mouths open looking at her. And you know what? When they saw the power of God in that real, authentic form, they literally didn't run. They got hungry. They wanted it. They began to pray. And the next thing you know, all nine of them are filled, and the word is spreading all over the, the creek. Everybody's talking about it. Next thing you know, they've got 100 people, 200 people. Within 10 years, 22,000 people were birthed out of the little house there at W.F. Bryant's home. There they, the power of the Spirit of the Lord was, was so amazing. It was God birthing something amazing. Taking one little group, one little individual lady. I don't know who she is. I can't wait to get down. I'm sure she's not a living. I mean, that was 100 years ago, over 100. If she is, then, then she really got some power, I'll tell you. I want to meet her when I get to heaven. I want to find out who that little lady was who first got filled with the Spirit you know, over here on the East Coast. Because, you know, then we find out a little while later over here in California, in Los Angeles at the Azusa Street Mission, there's a revival going on, and the same thing happens. They have the power of the Lord. Somebody begins to pray in the Spirit, and the Holy Ghost falls in a great outpouring. They're having revival. They're having revival over here on the East Coast. And I see it, you know, we've had all these debates. You know, if, you're, if you come from the assembly's background, they'll say, well, we were first. And Church of God says, well, no, we were first. And the Anderson group says, no, we were first. And it's like all of it comes back together. And we look at all these groups of people and we say, it don't really matter. I don't, I don't know where or when exactly. You know, they, may, they didn't have Instagram, so nobody took a photo and posted it. So we don't know exactly what happened. But we do know this. 
We know that God chose to revision the book of Joel. He chose to take Joel chapter 2, verse 28, and literally he lived it out in the last days. And he did an outpouring on the east coast and on the west coast at the same time. They sent horse circuit preachers from those meetings literally sent them until they started meeting one another and they started going across the united states until it absolutely saturated the entire country by the time rg sperling assemblies of god got down here to camp creek north carolina he said oh let me tell you what happened in la i've got to preach a revival down here in the mountains they said oh you come too late the lord has already fallen in the hills of north carolina and that power one minute one mighty move of god comes across this entire country it then turns and takes off to Europe it goes through Europe and covers the continent gets on down there to Grand Ole Australia and all those people get get filled with the Holy Ghost and all the power of the Lord is all across the world the Pentecostal movement of 1900s whenever that was early early 1900 we say it was 1896 they say it was 1906 I say it was there but what's important is that the Lord started a movement, but that wasn't the first time he'd ever poured out like that. It wasn't the second time. It wasn't the third or fourth time. If you're a theologian and you study the history and the timelines of prophecy and you study the timeline of the church, you will understand and know that all down through history, no matter what anybody tells you, you listen to pastor, no matter what anybody else tells you, there has always been a testimony of the baptism of the Holy Spirit all down through history. St. Augustine wrote about it in 400 AD. All down through the history, Josephus, all these people were aware of the different uh, forms of the Holy Spirit. All, there was always a move of God. God pouring out a revival, pouring out the Spirit. He's been doing this since His promises have been fulfilled. And He's still doing it now. And we're living in that time now. And I just dare to believe God for a continuing of that outpouring in our church. I'm calling us to Bible reading. I'm calling us to fasting. I'm going to be calling us to several other church-wide things as well over the next couple of weeks. But today, I'm calling us to church-wide power. I want that out pouring of the Holy Spirit. If we're going to pray and read His Word, if we're going to fast and get hungry for Him, then I want to see the results of it. I want to see the work of God. I don't want to stop until we see things happen in the supernatural because I believe God is getting His church ready. He wants a bride without spot, without wrinkle, without any such thing. He wants us to be prepared and ready when the bridegroom comes. I want oil in the lamp. I want it lit and ready. I want to hear him when he knocks at the midnight hour. I want him to know that Stratford Heights is on fire waiting for his soon coming. I won't buy into the compromise of this world or of the churches. I won't buy into you got to be cute and you got to back up and you got to settle down and you can't allow the spirit to move. I believe in decency and in order. I'm the weirdest Pentecostal guy you ever saw. I believe we ought to have order. I don't believe things ought to be crazy and go nuts. But I believe when we can order the move in the power of the Spirit of is moving and we can see that in order and it's right and it's purely the, the Lord moving, the Holy Spirit moving, I want to I protect that and guard that with all my heart. I want to know the difference and I want to have the discernment to sense and feel it. If somebody comes down here and they want to start, you know, shooting BB guns in the Holy Ghost, I'm going to stop them. I'm going to say, that's not right. That's out of order, brother. Don't shoot me like that. Ow. But I believe in order, but I believe in allowing the move of the Spirit of God. And it ought to be, there ought to be leaders in the church. There ought to be pastors and ministers that will stand up and say, that's in order, that's not in order. I want to keep us, is that all right? Do you believe that's all right? I, I want to make sure we stay focused. What, what I saw going on here this morning, you understand and know, I felt the presence of God. The power of the Lord was here in a mighty way. He was moving on one side and the other side. And we sensed and knew the power of the Holy Spirit was here doing a great work. But I guarantee you this pastor is also watching. Always watching. Just to make sure. I'm protecting my flock. I'll never forget when I took kids down to Winterfest 
at, at uh, uh, two, 24,000 people standing there in a crowd. And we had over 100 kids in our group. And I'm, I was the most protective youth pastor you ever saw in your life. And they, I, we, our, all of our youth leaders were stationed all around our kids. And there was a group of our kids over in one corner. And there was some folks, I don't know where they were from. I'm going to say Wisconsin. And they were, they were just a bunch of people. I don't think they had any kids with them. They just were there having a hoopla and a wonderful time. And they, they just started laying hands on all of our kids in that corner. And they were casting out devils. And they were doing all kinds of stuff. And I looked at them and I just thought like this. You know, I climbed over the seats. The kids will tell you. I climbed over the seats. And I got right there. And I stood right there behind them. And I went, thank you, Lord. I appreciate you, Jesus, for my kids. And I pulled them in real close right here. And I pulled my other youth leaders over, and we, we completely surrounded them, and we started praying for our kids. And our kids got filled with the Holy Ghost, didn't have to pull the devil out of them. They were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were filled, you know, the presence of God was there in a mighty, powerful way. I was protective. I'm protective over what I feel is the Holy Ghost and what's God. I think we need leaders today that'll be protective over the doctrines and over the foundations and make sure we're a word-centered church and that we're protective of our people. I believe that, and I, I, those people got all mad and looked at us and was like, we'll wipe the dust off our feet. I was like, well, you just do that. Yeah. I'll protect my kids. Yo, fist, yeah, got it. Nobody's doing it. <laughs> Whatever, they're not cool. <laughs> but what we stay is we stay focused on the promises of God. I want you to look at those promises that, that are listed there in this word for you. In the first part of Joel chapter 2, verse 21, Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done marvelous things. Here, right before he talks about the last day outpouring, he makes some promises here. He said, Don't be afraid, you beasts of the field, for the open pastures are springing up, and the tree bears its fruit, and the fig tree and the vine yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. Why do we walk around here? Oh, it's the last days. Oh, it's just horrible. We've got to stay hidden in the rock. We've got to hide in the cave. We've got to put a whole bunch of food in the basement and get ready for the tribulation period. Oh, you know. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord, for He has given you the former rain faithfully, and He's going to cause the rain to come down for you, the former rain and the latter rain. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. And he says, And so I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army, which I sent among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you, and my people shall never be put to shame. When you begin to see these things, I started reading that, and the Lord said, everybody wants to talk about the experience. Everybody wants to talk about the emotion. Everybody wants to talk about the outpouring. Why don't they look at the promises that I gave them before the outpouring? They'll know what they're shouting about. I want to be a church that knows why we're shouting. And you, have, you may have been abused, battered, beaten. You may have been pushed down, perplexed. You might have the enemy with every scheme and plot and, and trouble against you that there could possibly be. And you hold your head trying to come in and be comforted and be encouraged. But let me just clue you in on something. He has made a promise. We're in the last days. This is the last hours. And there is an outpouring that says what the locusts have eaten. He's going to have to give back to you with interest. He's going to have to give back to you everything that's ever come uh, taken from you. He's going to have to, to make sure that your threshing floor is full of wheat and your vats are full of oil, joy, and the Spirit. He's actually got so much promise for us right there that we ought to be shouting our way into the last days. It ought to be something that causes us to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. We ought to know that we are protected by God. He looks out for every one of us. You may go through troubles, but lift up your head. He is the lifter of your head, Psalm 3. He is the one who protects you from your enemies. They'll, they may encamp round about you. They may put their armies all around you. But like the prophet looked at the servant and said, Oh, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Remember this, children of God. There are more that are for you than are against you. you you have got the almighty power of God always working on your behalf. Do you believe that this morning? Say amen. amen. Oh, I lost my page. We're in a right now harvest. He said the vine's going to yield strength. 
He said the, the crops are going to be springing up. The beasts, you don't have to worry. The, the fields are going to be full. He talks about these things as part of the promises of the last day outpouring. So I want to tell you, don't live beneath your means, child of God. Start declaring and proclaiming the promises of God. I'm not asking you to start quoting and asking and desiring for things that you don't need and that aren't important in your life. But I am saying that if the promise is there, he's more or less saying you'll never go hungry and you'll never be put to shame. I'll always take care of you. So stand flat-footed against the enemy and against this world's values. Don't compromise. Stand on the foundations of truth that you have built your family on, that you've built your faith on, and stand true to it. Don't let the enemy steal another day, another hour, or another weekend from you. Let God be God in your life. This is the last days. This is a time of rejoicing, O oh children of Zion. This is a time to stand up and shout unto God with a voice of triumph because you are overcomers in Christ. Amen. God is accelerating our opportunities. He's, he's giving us, he's making it happen quickly. I mean, do you realize what that means? That means that he is literally, as we get closer, we said we're in the last days. Well, if Clayton Street thought they were, we're, we're closer now, but it's not so much that we're closer. He said, I'm going to, I've given you the former rain faithfully. He says, and I will cause the rain to come down for you. The former rain and the latter rain. I'm going to give you the rain in the beginning of your season and the rain at the end of your season. What that means is he said, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in the first month, 30 days. That's the word of God. So what he's saying to you and I is if we'll just wake up, let the scales fall from our eyes, let faith arise in the house of God. He's saying, I'm going to start you in your season right now, and I'm going to bless you as if you're at the end of your season, and I'm going to do it in the first month. Some of you need a financial miracle. You need God to provide for your family. You need him to give you guidance to get through a situation like a maze left and right. He's going to lead you right through to victory. If you will look to the word and have faith this morning, I believe this. I'm fired up over this because I believe it. I see it. Do you see it? I hope you see it because we are living so beneath our means. If I hear one more person tell me, well, the devil's pastor, pray for me. The devil's just been on my back all week long. Then kick him off. Kick him off. Shake him off. Woo! Yeah! Glory to God! Shake him off! Get a dance back in your shoes! Get a dance back in your feet! Let God be God! You need to see a miracle? Start shouting for the miracle right now! Telling you the former rain and the latter rain is coming together in the first month! You got the end already from the beginning! Oh! Hallelujah! You got the end from the beginning already! You need that boy saved? Claim him right now. See him saved in the name of Jesus. You need that husband saved? See him saved now. Right now in the beginning of your season. You need that job? You need it to provide for your family? You need to pay the bills? You want to see them paid? See them paid now in the name of Jesus. This is what we ought to do. This is not me trying to spill over some gospel that you don't understand. I'm reading from the Word of God. And He's the one who's telling us to, to hold to these truths, to stay true to these promises. He said these are the promises of the last days. How many of you know we're in the last days? We're here. Right now, harvest. Right now, rain. Right now, we're in the opportunities to see God do a mighty work. Would you stand with me this morning? Hallelujah. Trust me today. See if I will not move my hand on your behalf. Have faith in me to move mountains, and mountains will be removed. Trust and know that I have all power to meet every need in your life. I will take care of those secret things. Trust and give them to me today. 
Do not rely on your own strength. You have trusted in your own power. It is time to lay this down and cast all that care upon me. I will be your deliverance. I will be your stronghold. I will be the power you need to overcome. Trust in me today, says God, and watch me move. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, would you stand with me this morning? I'm going to ask everyone to get out from where you are. We're not going to wait one minute. Just get out and get to this altar as quickly as you can. You need to see your season change. You need to see that provision. You need to see that harvest. You've got someone. You've got to see them saved. You've got to see these promises unfold in your life and in the family and in your church. You've got to see it. Oh, the enemy doesn't want you to. He wants to hide what God wants to show you. He wants to hide the promises of God. Don't let it happen. Get in here close as you can so as many can come as, they, as possible. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, I feel him. Mm. And when I feel his presence, I'm bold as a lion. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Would you lift your hands this morning? Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let from him this morning begin to just ask him right now let it rain receive receive that harvest from God receive that from the Lord this morning he's here to empower you with his spirit he wants to pour out his power for you to see the promises and the miracles that he has for you he said trust me and watch me move call their name out right now call their name out before the Lord Hallelujah. Let, Let it rain. Let it rain. James. Open the front gates of hell. Let it rain. Let it rain, Lord. Let it rain. Pull your spirit out. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Right now, I want us as a congregation right here, I want you to commit yourself. I want you to give that to him. The number one you have said, is this, is this for me? Is he, is, Lord, is this really for me? I feel like I'm actually confirming something to somebody. Yes, this is for you. Your season change. The rain what you're seeing right now, God's going to bring the end of it forward for you. And it's going to come forward in a testimony for you. I promise you, I just, someone is getting something from that. I, I don't even know what it means. The power of the Holy Spirit is here. He's speaking to you. 
Yes, this is for you. Your season's going to change. How you felt coming in is not how you're going to feel going out. Mm. Hallelujah. How you felt coming in is not how you're going to feel going out. It changes for you right now. Right now. It's a right now harvest. A right now move of God. Lift up your hands if that's you. If you need that. Right now, God, change. Right now, I leave the building. I'm different. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates. Let it rain, Lord. Let it rain, Lord. Now, now, Sean, now, now, lift your hands. Ladies, right there, lay your hands on Sean. Now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, Rabbi Kosovo, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Duran, now, right now. Some of you gentlemen, get around Duran. Find some, uh, some of you, Brother Orville, I want you to lay your hands on Duran right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Name. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for Duran. Now, in Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, Bob, lay your hands on it. Bob, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Marty, turn around, lay your hands on Tyler. Pray over him. Seth, move forward. Marty, go straight to Seth when you're done with him. In the name of Jesus. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we believe you. We thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. You need your season to change right now. I've come back to you. I didn't want to pray for you because you're my brother-in-law. But people might, you know, you, you, get, you get wrestling. I walked over here. The Lord said, I told you to pray for Doug. Lift your hands. You need your season to change right now. You need to go out of this building feeling different than you. Shut that up, I Yes, God, we give it to you, my Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. Praise God, praise God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you. If you would, I, I believe we would be amiss if we left you this morning and we didn't pray for those who need Jesus. Would you bow your heads with me? If you're here this morning and you did not have that relationship with Jesus, you need him in your heart and your life to be your savior. You didn't understand a lot that's taking place today, but you feel that you know the difference. You know there's power in this house. And you know that you need relationship with Christ. He needs to be your savior and your sins need to be forgiven. If you're here today and you'd pray that prayer with us in this altar right where you are, or if you're back at your seat, would you simply lift your hand and write back down? Would you write where you are? God bless you. Anyone else? God bless you. Anyone else? I need Jesus this morning, Pastor. Just up and right back down. Anyone else? All right. Congregation, church, let's pray together with these folks. This prayer is just words. But prayed from your heart will change your whole life. Your season changes right now. Let's pray this together. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I know you're the Son of God. You died on the cross for me. You rose from the dead. You purchased my salvation. 
be the Lord of my life. I come to you in your name. I declare you're my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Now, Father, I come and bring this congregation to you in this altar. I pray that you will touch each one of us. Lord, I am believing the moment they turn and walk from this altar that something has changed. Steps are ordered. I'm believing, Father, that your work is going to be accomplished in ways that's going to surprise them, shock them even. I believe, Lord, we're going to hear testimony from this service that there has been a change in my season, a change in their season. I'm believing, Father, that your work and will is going to be done and that you are leading this church into a preparation for ministry such as we have never seen in 100 years. I believe this and I thank you for it. Lord, I pray against the work of the enemy that would poise itself against the families of this church. I ask you, Father, to protect them, to keep your hand on every father, every mother, every child. I pray that you will keep your hand on every, uh, every child of the Lord, whether married or divorced or widowed. I pray that you would touch those that are single. I pray in the name of Jesus, your work to be accomplished and done in their lives. I pray that you will guard and protect this church. The enemy would love to see this church go down. He would love to see this church shut its doors. He would love to see us not be able to function. But I come against his schemes, his devices. In the name of Jesus Christ, I plead the blood of Calvary and of Christ over this congregation. You've kept us 100 years. Lord, we're going to continue until you come for your church. We thank you for this truth. We thank you for this prayer. We thank you for the promises of your word. You are going to restore. You are going to bring a right now harvest. And God, we are going to have opportunity after opportunity in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because you have poured out your Holy Spirit. For it's not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit. We thank you for this truth in your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, before Richard comes today, we, we kind of traditionally are going to